G'day again, Patrick Vinerow here, orthopedic surgeon from the Brisbane Hip Clinic. So thanks for tuning in again. This presentation is on the non-surgical management of osteoarthritis of the hip joint. A really important topic because non-surgical management of hip joint osteoarthritis consistently works really well. Um, it's very effective, uh, particularly if it's coordinated uh, in a uh, logical way, uh, people will experience really worthwhile symptom relief and improvement in function uh, if they if they adhere to some of the simple principles. So, um, when I see someone for the first time with osteoarthritis of the hip joint, um, generally one of the first discussions I'll have with them is about um, the differences between different management strategies and broadly speaking we break management of the hip joint osteoarthritis into two main groups that's the non-surgical group and the surgical group um, and there'll be some people who um, when they first meet me are maybe best off managed surgically and then some people in whom I'll counsel um, towards non-surgical management. Um, so um, when we think about the two main groups of management, surgical or non-surgical, uh, it's important to understand the objectives of what we're trying to achieve with each of those measures. So the objective of um, non-surgical treatment generally is, the, is to be able to manage the condition it's, as opposed to curing the condition. So the flavour of non-surgical treatment is um, generally most of the treatments are um, uh, fairly simple to apply, um, they're very safe, um, they're generally partly effective and when you combine a number of strategies in combination we tend to see um, that the results are better um, and um, they're um, generally pretty worthwhile in terms of reduction in pain. So non-surgical um, treatments generally can be broken into, I think anyway, probably best broken into three main groups. Um, each has their own role. Um, they're best delivered in combination and we use each um, strategy uh, on an as required basis um, because the symptoms of osteoarthritis are very rarely static. So um, most of you who are listening to this um, will um, have experienced this where your osteoarthritis symptoms are very rarely um, stable throughout the the course of your condition you'll have periods of time where your symptoms are actually pretty good right and you'll be managing fairly well without needing any tablets or any management you can be pretty active and then um, for one reason or another you'll have um, periods of time in your life where your symptoms are more significant and so um, that's where having a, a sort of a more flexible approach in terms of your non-surgical management is a, a, an important concept where you'll escalate your treatment according to how your symptoms are going at any one given point in time. So for instance, uh, where you might be experiencing more symptoms because of an exacerbation of your condition related to, uh, say for instance, some certain types of activities that you're performing, um, then that's where if you want to be able to uh, reduce your symptoms, you'll start to escalate your treatments. So non-surgical treatment is generally fairly flexible in nature. Okay, so what are the three main groups? The three main groups are firstly um, exercise, prescription, uh, physical therapies and conditioning. The second uh, group is long-acting pharmaceutical injectable therapies is the second group. Um, and the third group is oral tablet pharmaceuticals. So they're the three main groups of um, non-surgical therapies. That's exercise prescription with physical therapies and conditioning, ex injectable therapies and tablet pharmaceuticals. Okay, so um, what's the role for uh, exercise prescription? Um, so um, exercise prescription can be delivered um, by a number of different um, health practitioners. Um, so it depends on what you need most. Um, and um, so, um, so that the um, types of advice that you'll get with physical therapies will be things like um, lifestyle and fitness advice. Um, so for those who are performing uh, certain styles of um, uh, sporting pursuits or want to be able to 
uh, continue uh, in an active lifestyle. They might uh, be given some advice about adjustments or modifications that they can uh, that they can easily institute in their um, activities that will improve their symptoms and function. Um, uh, the um, other domain of exercise prescription is strength and conditioning because often we would find people with osteoarthritis of the hip joint generally have um, um, compensated for this condition for a really long period of time and so they've probably um, drawn themselves into certain habits and postures um, which may have some flow on effects in terms of um, for instance um, other conditions developing around the hip joint like for instance bursitis or tendonitis conditions around the hip joint due to changes in their mechanical function. Um, so most of the, um, the uh, uh, treatments in the exercise prescription and physical therapies category are practical strategies for improving function and um, often we would uh, get people to go to see uh, a good physiotherapist or an exercise physiologist um, as, a, as a start point for those sorts of therapies. Injectable therapies are in a, a group of treatments that I would probably best term uh, long-term therapies. So the objective of a, of a long-term therapy is to draw all of your symptoms down uh, by a notch. So um, they don't really stop you getting flares. So you'll still, with an injectable therapy on board, still get um, ups and downs of your symptoms related to physical pursuits or activities or um, even just um, uh, without any particular given reason the natural history of osteoarthritis is of one of a sort of a meandering course so injectable therapies won't stop you getting ups and downs but what they will do is probably pull all of your symptoms down so that all of your symptoms are at a, a lower sort of level. Now there's a, a couple of different injectable types um, so a common sort of injection that a lot of people have heard about um, is a steroid injection and um, steroid injection does have a, a role in the management of osteoarthritis. Um, it's um, very effective in the majority of people. Um, it reduces um, symptoms for uh, only a sort of a modest amount of time though. So we don't tend to inject um, steroids all that often um, in my practice. The, the reason being is that we're generally trying to look for something that's um, got a little bit more of a long-term effect. Where we might use steroid um, injections is where we're trying to suppress uh, an, a, an acute exacerbation or a, a quite a significant flare of the osteoarthritic symptoms. And in that case, um, it's actually quite useful for that finite period of time, maybe a couple of months. The uh, injectable therapy that we probably use the most uh, is what's called a visco supplement. So uh, a visco supplement is a, is a medication um, which, is, uh, which is delivered directly into your hip joint and it stimulates um, the lining cells of the hip joint to make its own lubricant thicker, um, probably give or take for around about a year. Um, and so most people um, respond with about a 30% reduction, maybe 40% reduction in symptoms um, for around about between 6 and 18 months. So um, that's, a, that's a sort of a quite a good long-term way of being able to pull your symptoms back. Um, the, um, there's a number of different types of injectable therapies and a lot of people have heard of uh, uh, some of the brand names like Synvisc. Um, there are a number of them on the market that are uh, fairly similar medications and there's um, some advantages and disadvantages of each. Okay, um, there are some other injectable therapies that are available. Um, for instance, uh, uh, PRP or platelet-rich plasma um, has started to become a little bit more popular. Um, we tend to use PRP more for the management of uh, tendon irritations. Um, there is some um, data looking at its use in uh, osteoarthritis, but at this stage it's relatively limited, so we, we, we don't use PRP all that often for hip joint osteoarthritis. So tablet pharmaceuticals are the uh, last thing that we need to talk about. Um, and um, tablet pharmaceuticals are probably broken into three groups. There's um, paracetamol products, 
Um, there's anti-inflammatory medications like um, Nurofen or Voltaren or Movic or Celebrex. Um, and um, then there's analgesic tablets, things like um, tramadol and endone and, and those sorts of medications. So now each of these medications has their role. Um, the, um, I suppose the, the thing to think about with tablet pharmaceuticals is that um, whilst they are um, quite effective, um, most of the time uh, we would use tablet pharmaceuticals um, selectively and for um, intermittent periods of time. So uh, an example of where a tablet pharmaceutical is really worthwhile um, with a really low side effect profile is in the management of, of flares of symptoms. So if you recall that the symptoms of osteoarthritis are generally of a meandering sort of up and down course and you can improve those symptoms by providing the person with a, a long-acting injectable therapy, pulling all the symptoms down, but they still get their ups and downs. So when they have a, a flare of their symptoms, that's where we use the tablet pharmaceuticals for a, for a finite period of time. Say, for instance, maybe a, a, a week or two or something like that. And um, if used selectively for short durations of time, um, Tablet pharmaceuticals have a very low side effect profile, and so they're a really effective measure for management of trying to knock all the sharp edges off the symptoms when they sort of go up and down. So it's a good way of being able to um, use them on an as required basis, depending on your symptoms are, on how your symptoms are on a day to day basis. So uh, a lot of people are. Um, uh, a little bit afraid of the use of tablet pharmaceuticals because of um, side effects like, for instance, stomach upset and uh, irritability, particularly with the anti-inflammatory preparations. Um, and, um, and that's perfectly understandable. Um, um, what I would um, recommend is that <clears throat> whilst that is, the, that is a known side effect profile of some of the anti-inflammatory preparations, when they're used, um, however, in... Uh, a, a strategic way for uh, very short durations of time, then, um, then those side effects are very seldomly seen. Um, so I think that you can use them quite skillfully uh, as a blended approach with your other non-surgical managements without fear of those side effects if you, if you abide by the, by the guidelines. Okay, so that's the, um, that's a sort of a, a, a general synopsis of the of the non-surgical management of osteoarthritis. Just to recap, um, osteoarthritis is a, a, a condition which has sort of a bit of a meandering up and down course, um, and we can really effectively manage osteoarthritis non-surgically with a coordinated um, plan of attack, which attacks the, the, the problem from a number of different angles simultaneously. So generally the non-surgical management um, is comprised of exercise prescription, physical therapies and conditioning programs, long-acting injectable therapies to be able to reduce all of your symptoms down uh, by a notch, and then intermittent use of tablet pharmaceuticals for short-acting therapy for um, intermittent flare-ups. So I hope that you found this uh, presentation really useful. Um, have a great day.